in rural Pennsylvania. A day of skeet shooting becomes a baffling cold case. Marty Dillon Tripp rotated the gun and it discharged and killed him. It's called an accident, but a father suspects foul play. 20 years later, Dr. Henry Lee is called in to determine exactly what happened. This case is kind of unique. It happened a long time ago. Dr. Henry Lee had been called to Montrose, Pennsylvania to review the evidence in the shotgun death of Marty Dillon, which had been ruled an accident 20 years ago. The only witness to the shooting, Dr. Stephen Shear and his victim's widow, Patricia, are married and living in North Carolina. The original coroner is dead. Memories have faded. But the authorities have convinced Dr. Lee to look at the evidence and reconstruct the crime. One of the first things investigators noticed was the shotgun round that had killed Marty Dillon. These type of shot shells, these number four larger BBs, are designed for hunting. They're designed, yes, to give you less pellets, but also to give you more hitting power, more stopping power. They're much more designed for a hunting type load. The number four shell was interesting, but hardly conclusive. Dr. Lee knew that the real evidence was still waiting to be examined. A tree stump, earplugs, and Dr. Shear's boots and jeans. The leather boots, when we exam, we found some blood spatter. Dr. Shear had explained that the blood must have gotten on his clothes and boots while he tried to administer CPR. But would his explanation hold up under scrutiny? Dr. Lee's findings didn't square with Shear's story. One wouldn't expect to find that type of spatter if he merely was performing medical aid or medical assistance to his friend. You would have needed a much higher dynamic energy source, a gunshot, to create that spatter. Dr. Lee found a similar pattern of blood spatter on the side of the tree stump. Dr. Lee knew Stephen Shear's story was inconsistent with the evidence. Returning to the original crime scene, Dr. Lee performed another test to determine how far from the victim the fatal shot was fired. Okay. Nice shot. Nice shot. So, start separating. You can see that. Now we move closer. That's four feet. Now we do a two feet one. Two feet. The experiment is conclusive. The size of the hole in Marty Dillon's chest was created by number four shot, fired between two and four feet away. Dr. Lee and his team then began to reconstruct the scene as it was 20 years ago. Once Dr. Lee placed all the evidence back in its original position, he was able to piece together what he believed happened the day Marty Dillon was killed. Cher was in this location when the shot fired in that direction, right. the high impact, high velocity blood spatter. Uh, subsequently, he probably tumbled falling on the ground, caused this transfer of the blood, and uh, subsequently turned. According to Dr. Lee's evaluation of the trace evidence, Marty Dillon was tending the skeet machine, either sitting on or near the stump, when Stephen Shear shot him to death. This explained how blood spatter landed both on the stump and Steve Shear's boot. Had a crime gone unpunished for two decades? <laughs> Dr. Stephen Shear, the man who said he had witnessed Dylan accidentally shoot himself and then married his widow, was now on trial for murder. The prosecution presented evidence found on Dr. Shear's genes that removed any doubt that Shear was within a few feet of Dylan when he was shot. The tissue, tiny bits of flesh, belonged to Marty Dylan. But how did it get on Dr. Shear's jeans? By looking at high-speed video of a simulated shotgun wound, it is easy to see how the force created by such a violent action produces what is called a blowback, something that couldn't have happened while first aid was being administered. The wearer of the jeans must have been within a few feet of Dylan when the gun was fired. Dr. Shear had an even bigger surprise to share with the packed courtroom. He changed his story completely. He admitted that he had been lying for 20 years, that they were arguing over the fact that, that there was an affair and the gun accidentally discharged during the course of a struggle. Dr. Shear's astonishing admission that an argument over his affair with Dylan's wife had led to a struggle for the gun and an accidental discharge explained the blood spatter. 
This seemed to cast doubt on the charge of first degree homicide. But the doctor's new story contained one major inconsistency with the trace evidence. The blood pattern matches here. The evidence showed that Dylan was wearing the earmuffs when the fatal shot was fired. How could you have a conversation with someone with their earmuffs on? How could they be talking about an affair between his wife and Dr. Scher without hearing clearly? It was, it was clearly a lie. Every, every, every one of them, all 12 of them, stood up and said guilty. Luckily, the boots and blue jean was preserved. And the evidence speak itself and to us. Show us the story. Show us the sequence event. What really happened that day?